I'm Adrian, and I'm a master's student at Oxford studying mathematical modeling and scientific computing. I'm in Corpus Christi College, which is where we are right now. Uh, and yeah, I've been doing lots of fun things at Oxford, like mountaineering club, football team, which is actually a soccer team. Um, but yeah, there's lots of fun things to do here aside from the math. So a typical day in the life here, um, try to go for a run in the morning. There are a lot of really beautiful parks around Oxford. Um, so, and actually the weather here is much better than people will tell you. It's usually really sunny. So then I usually have a couple hours of lecture for the day, work on some math problems with my course mates. Um, no day is complete without at least two breaks for tea and biscuits. Um, then generally come back to Corpus for hall. Sometimes we have formal hall or a friend from another college will invite me to their hall for dinner, which is really fun. Um, and then generally I try to do something fun in the evening, like I go climbing with friends or maybe go see a film or a show. They have a really great symphony here. Um, lots of different types of things to do, but no day is ever boring, that's for sure. So you are doing a master's program in mathematical modeling and scientific computing. Mm -hmm, exactly. What does that mean? <laughs> uh, that's a great question. Um, so it's a really project-based course for people with backgrounds in something like math or engineering, physics, that type of thing. Um, it involves modeling and computing. So um, on the modeling side, it's like taking a complicated problem and winnowing down to the most important parts and trying to get a feel for how you would actually be able to solve it. Mm -hmm. And then on the computing side, most of the time these problems aren't actually solvable analytically, so we have to know how to use different types of algorithms and um, software and coding languages to be able to actually find the answers to these problems that we're looking at. Sure, amazing. So it's a one-year program. <clears throat> yeah. What structurally does the program look like from beginning to end? That's a great question too. Um, so it's three terms here at Oxford. Um, the first term is called Michaelmas, second is Hillary, and then Trinity. So ours is a full 12 months, so we go through all those three terms and then the summer afterwards. So the first term is almost completely taught courses, so like you know, lecture courses, and then you take exams at the end of the break. And the second term is like that, a bit fewer courses, uh, but then more projects, hands-on work with faculty, um, small research projects, some group work. And then over each break between those terms, we do um, our own little mini projects on the electives that we took the previous semester, the previous term. Um, and then at the, in the third term and the summer, we work on our own dissertations with the faculty member. So that's like a four or five month long mini thesis, basically. Great. Do you know what you want to do your dissertation mm -hmm. about yet? Yeah, I actually just decided yesterday. Okay, um, congrats. So it's a bit different than in America where most of the time you maybe work with a faculty member to come up with your own project. Um, here they actually presented us with the project ideas. So we got a big packet full of lots of different topics. Um, a lot of them were super interesting. Tons of different types of work actually. Um, everything from biologically related problems to super mathy, like just looking at the methods themselves. Um, a lot of fluid dynamics, physics, that type of thing. Um, some things focused on networks. But so what I decided to do was um, work on a model of the heart and look at the two-way interface between the electrochemistry and the mechanics of the heart because it's not actually that well understood how the mechanics affect electrochemistry, even though we do understand well how electrochemistry affects the mechanics. This is the Corpus Christi Chapel. Every college has their own chapel, but ours is actually just awarded the prize for the most beautifully adorned chapel at Oxford. You're involved in mountaineering club, in football. Is that all um, centered around the college, or is that sort of Oxford more broadly? So um, the football is centered in college. Okay. I'm in the Corpus Pembroke women's football team. So we don't have enough uh, women for our own team, so we joined with another college, which is also pretty small. So that's centered at Corpus. We're actually in semifinals, so in a couple yeah. weeks, we'll hopefully make it to finals. Um, and that's super fun. I never mm -hmm. played soccer before. 
And so what's the commitment like with Mountaineering Club? It's whatever you want it to be. Um, I go about once a week, usually on Thursdays after I finished all of my math work for the week. Um, and usually we try to convince a few of our math friends to come too. Mm -hmm. um, but then every Wednesday there's a pub night. Um, every Monday they do more bouldering. And then on Thursdays it's more rope climbing, top mm -hmm. rope climbing. So overall, how would you sort of rate your experience uh, studying in the States and then moving over to study in the UK? I, I'm having a great experience with it. I think that the way that student life is here in comparison to college in America, um, it's a really good transition almost into real life. It's a, it's a bit more laid back than I think college was, um, but still so much to do, so much so many different activities, so that's been really, really great. Um, I don't think there was such a huge culture shock or anything. Um, I mean, Britain's not that different from America. It is in many ways, but um, nothing that's too much to handle. Um, it's really, really nice meeting so many international students. That's been one of my favorite parts of it. About 50% of the grad students here are international. That includes Americans, but yeah, so that's been great. Um, I mean, it's, it's kind of difficult to categorize what if the differences that I'm seeing are between undergrad and graduate school or between studying in America and studying oh, in sure. the UK. So, I mean, I'm not sure on that level, but um, yeah, overall it's been a really great transition, mm -hmm. I'd say. And overall, why did you choose Oxford? I really love this program. So I was looking for something um, to do to help me narrow down my interests a bit and um, I knew I, I really liked math and I really liked certain areas of science um, to which I could apply my math, but I wasn't sure exactly what. Um, and I thought that this would be a really good way to be able to try out a few different application areas before applying for PhDs. And in the end, that's what I found it to be. Um, it's a shame that applications are in the winter because I still have so much left of my course right, to right. experience. So you're sort of doing um, double duty a little bit. Yeah, exactly. And I also wanted to have an experience abroad because I never studied abroad in college. And I, I've traveled quite a bit, but I wanted an experience of really living in another country. Um, so those are the main reasons I chose to come to Oxford. What advice would you give to someone who's interested in either applying to a master's program like this or interested in studying in the UK? I would say just go for it. I mean, why not? Um, I think that sometimes people don't really consider the possibility of going abroad um, for grad school, but it's such a great experience. Um, I mean, student, the life of a student is so great anyway, and to have that experience in another country is really awesome. So I would just recommend that. If you like this video and you want to learn more about top universities around the world, please subscribe.